I started posting on YouTube in July of this year and just six weeks later, I was officially monetized. Fast forward three months and I went from zero to 10K subscribers. If you're a new YouTuber struggling to grow your channel or if you are thinking of starting a YouTube channel but want a massive head start, then this video is for you. I'll be uncovering all the secrets to collecting ad revenue on your videos as soon as possible and how to supercharge your channel growth so that you can go from zero to your first few thousand subscribers in no time. I've also included a PDF in the description below which deep dives into one of the top Topics that I'll be covering in today's video, which is on TTH, and that is title, thumbnail, hook. Out of everything that I mentioned in this video, I would say that that is probably one of the most important aspects of growing your channel. So do check that out in the description below. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. And as always, timestamps below if you want to skip ahead because I value your time. The first point that I wanted to touch on is having big YouTuber energy. So what do I mean by this? This is basically thinking about the kind of YouTuber that you aspire to be and then showing up as that person from day one. It's immediately going into it with the attitude that you are already a big YouTuber. And what this does is it forces you to level up from the start. For example, with me, I created a professional looking banner from day one and I bought a domain, which is hello at tikagafar.com. I also got Canva premium from day one. I didn't wait to do any of these things. And in fact, I started doing all of this even before I started the channel. I didn't think, oh, once I get big enough, then I'm gonna start doing this or that. Every step of the way, I kept thinking to myself, a big YouTuber wouldn't have a crappy banner or a big YouTuber would use a fancier transition or effect here, or a big YouTuber would have this level of confidence when they speak. And each time I had those thoughts, I would then go and learn how to do those things better and then immediately apply those to my video creation process. You might still be missing some of the skills to be doing things like editing videos really well or creating really awesome thumbnails, but by already thinking that you're a big YouTuber and showing up with that level of energy, it's gonna force you to level up. And then you'll start your journey by setting the bar high. All you have to do is minimize that gap between where you are currently and where you want to be by just 1% with each and every video that you make. Tip number two here is that consistency is not enough. The phrase be consistent is literally what every YouTuber says and I'm pretty sure you're sick and tired of hearing it. Be consistent. You need to make the algorithm happy. Yes, it's important to be posting on a regular basis, but consistency is not enough. You need to be improving each and every single time you make a video. Consistency plus incremental improvements equals channel growth. I made a vow to improve at least one thing with each and every video that I make. For example, I'll tell myself, okay, for this video, I'm going to learn how to do these cool effects and transitions. Or for the next video, I'll think of how I can make my hook better. Or for my speaking clips, I'll think, okay, maybe I'll film at different locations so that the background's different and it's more engaging. With making good videos, there's a million and one things that you can think about and tweak to make improvements. And it can get really overwhelming. So what really helps me is to just focus on improving just one thing with each and every video. With enough time, experience, and knowledge, you will see all those incremental improvements accumulating over time and stacking in your favor so that one day you're going to be consistently making really high quality videos that people will want to watch. Another thing to note here is that if you're not cringing at your past self, then it probably means that you're staying comfortable and are not growing or pushing yourself enough. I started making videos four months ago and I literally cannot bring myself to watch my first few videos because the quality of those is so different to the quality of the videos that I make today. And that's a good sign because if you're not cringing at your past self, then again, it just means that you're staying comfortable and you're not pushing yourself to be better. Number three is on the holy trinity, which is your TTH, your title, thumbnail, and hook. I would probably say that this is one of the most, if not the most important aspect to master if you really want to grow your YouTube channel. I really didn't want to make this video too long, but I also didn't want to skimp out on all the insightful and valuable details on this particular topic. So I've actually created a PDF which dives deeper into TTH. It basically deep dives into all the formulas and structures you can use to make a really good title and hook and provide specific examples that you can directly take inspiration from. So if that's something that you're interested in, then do check out the link in the description. But on this topic, I just wanted to highlight a few very key important points. Number one is that it needs to be engaging. If your TTH is not engaging, then no one is going to click on your video in the first place and all the effort that you put into filming, editing, scripting, and all that will go to waste. This is something that I found quite difficult to wrap my head around at the beginning, but you should be spending a disproportionate amount of time on your title, thumbnail, and hook. Forget the script, forget the editing, forget the rest. If your TTH isn't solid, then there's literally no point. Test out different titles and then see what thumbnails would work best with it and then really spend a disproportionate amount of time for the first 30 seconds of your script. Because if people aren't engaged within the first 30 seconds, then there's no chance that they're gonna stick around for the rest of the video. Another thing with TTH is that it needs to synergize and each component needs to say something new or something more about the video. You don't wanna be repeating 
doing the same thing for all three. So for example, if your title is how I got abs in six months, and then the text in the thumbnail is abs in six months, and then you start your hook by saying, this is how I got abs in six months, the viewer is going to get bored because you've essentially told them the same thing three times, and they're going to be thinking, okay, what's new? So try to use each of these three things to tell your audience something more about the video so that they can see that they will be getting a lot of value from it. For the thumbnail, usually high quality videos tend to do really well because people will have the perception that, oh, if the thumbnail is high quality, then I can probably assume that the video will be high quality as well. Your facial expression is also really important in the thumbnail. So if you can be more emotive, that's usually what would make people want to click on a thumbnail. The hook needs to immediately deliver value and make it clear what they will get if they continue watching the rest of your video. There's a really cool tool that you can use, which is thumbsup.tv, where you can test out your title and your thumbnail together. And you can kind of see, okay, what is it going to look like for the viewer when it's in the sidebar, or if it's on the homepage, or if it's in their history, or if it's on mobile. That has really helped me to test out my title and thumbnail combinations. It might take some time to understand what makes a good TTH. Like definitely for me, I'm still learning and it is really, really hard. So it takes practice and it does take time. But another thing that really helped me as well is gaining inspiration from other YouTubers. So what I've done is I've created private playlists on my YouTube channel and I will basically save any YouTube videos that I see from other people with really good thumbnails or really good titles. If I'm really struggling, I can always go back to those playlists and I will just have a look to gain some inspiration. Number four is you are your niche. In essence, this whole point is about being your authentic self. And to be honest, this is something that I really struggled with at the beginning and I'm still trying to be better at now because to be your most authentic self on camera in front of thousands of people is a really daunting and vulnerable place to be. When you show up as you and if people don't like that, then that can really be a blow to your ego. I won't get too deeply into this, but the faster you come to terms with the fact that I'm not for everybody and that's okay, then the faster you can show up as your authentic self to people that really do appreciate your personality and what you have to offer. It's cultivating the mindset that, you know, not everyone's going to like me or my content, but that's okay because I'm going to show up for the people who do care about my content and who do find value in it. And to be honest, I realized that this is probably the most important asset you have when it comes to content creation, because there are thousands and thousands of people doing exactly what you're doing, but there's no single other person in the world that's doing it the way you do it. I've got friends who want to start YouTube channels or who want to start fitness Instagrams, but they always say, oh, you know, what's the point? There's so many other people doing that already. The market is so saturated. You are the point. None of these people are you. You have a really unique way of showing up, the way you behave, your beliefs, your personality, and the value that you can bring to people. And that is what people will resonate with the most. I personally follow so many fitness influencers on Instagram. And to be honest, I really don't need to. From an advice perspective, they more or less say the exact same things. But the whole point is that they present these things in such different ways because they've got different personalities or different ways of explaining things or they make their content a bit more entertaining or engaging or inspirational. It all really just boils down to their personality and that's what I resonate with and that's why I follow these different people. At the end of the day, that is really what's going to set you apart. Essentially, you are your niche and no one can ever be you as good as you can be you, if that makes sense. This is something that I'm still trying to figure out but really take some time to think about what uniqueness can I bring to the content sphere and just double down on that. It's really hard and it does take some time and it does take a lot of soul searching and introspection, but it'll definitely pay off in the long run. Number five is to not make this about you. You know the saying that the customer is king? Well, on YouTube, the viewer in this case is the king. At every stage of the video creation process, whether that's your filming, your scripting, or your editing, you wanna be asking yourself, how can I make this experience better for the viewer? Each time I make a video, I try to think to myself, how can I explain this in the simplest way possible to make it as convenient as possible for my viewers to understand what I'm trying to say. I also add timestamps and chapters to my videos every single time because then the viewer can just skip to whichever parts are interesting and valuable for them. Not everyone is going to care or relate to every single thing that you say in a video, but that doesn't matter. As long as they can get the information that they need, then that video is going to help that person. I like to add contents pages as well from my explainer videos so then people will know exactly what they're getting into. And from there, they can assess straight away whether this video is for them or not. To keep the viewer engaged, it also really helps to have something happening on the screen every 10 to 20 seconds, whether that's text popping up or a cool transition or an animation or a sound effect or some really good B-roll. Because if you have long stretches of time where the person is just talking at the camera, then this can be really disengaging. And I'm also trying to do this thing where I make my videos less than 10 minutes long because let's be real, no one really has the time or the attention span anymore. And it would be 
super hypocritical of me to be making 15 or 20 minute long videos because I personally can't sit through those. Even after five minutes of watching a video, my brain starts to shut down. So I'm trying to make it a priority to pack as much value as possible in the shortest amount of time possible. But bottom line is every single time you plan a video, just try to think to yourself, what outcome could people have from my advice? How can I be helpful to others? Or how can I make the content more convenient or more engaging or more inspirational for the viewer? Tip number six is about doing things in short bursts. Growing a YouTube channel is really difficult, especially if you have a nine to five job. I work full time in banking, so I really do not have the luxury of big chunks of time to work on my YouTube channel. And it sucks sometimes because I'm not in the right creative headspace, especially when work takes up a lot of my mental bandwidth, as well as all the day to day things that I have to do, like taking care of myself, exercising, feeding myself, doing chores. So what has been a massive game changer for me is working on things in little chunks. I script in little chunks. I edit in little chunks because those chunks will accumulate over the week and by the end of the week you'll have a finished script or you'll have edited a brand new video. I started scripting this video for 10 minutes whilst I was having dinner one day and then the next day when I was commuting to work I scripted for another 10 minutes and after those 20 minutes I'd already finished more or less the basic skeleton of this video. So whenever inspiration strikes which can really come at any time then that's what I'll take advantage of and use those 10 to 20 minutes just to work on my YouTube. It's disjointed and it's messy a lot of the time. When I'm scripting, 90% of the time, I'm usually not in my room on my desk with my aesthetic setup and like a lighted scented candle. I'm usually scripting when I'm on the train, on the way to work, when I'm sandwiched in between people and I can just barely type with my hand. Or I'll be eating dinner and with video editing, usually I'll come back home from the gym and I'll take maybe an hour or two just to do some more edits. And by the end of the week, those minutes and those hours will accumulate. And like I said, you'll have a brand new video completed or you'll have a brand new script that you can use. So the last tip here is an honest truth and that is it just takes one video. It just takes one video to pop off all of a sudden for you to gain a ton of subscribers in a very short period of time. So it really helps to treat each video as if it could be the thing that pops off. And that can happen at any time, whether that's, you know, a week after you post your video or a year later. And this thought really motivated me to make sure that each video I create is as good as I could make it. This means putting in that little bit of effort, even if it is terribly inconvenient for you to do so. I actually have a really great example of this point and it's about one of my videos that popped off one day and at the time of recording it has over 360,000 views. So I had already finished editing the entire video on my super old seven-year-old Lenovo laptop and to be honest the final cut for that really wasn't that great because I was super limited in what transitions and effects and extra things I could do and that was because the performance of my laptop was really really bad and I swear if I did any more it would not have survived the rendering of that video. But shortly before I was planning to publish the video I had actually gotten my new M2 MacBook Pro and I thought to myself hey I've got this new laptop already and I've got a few days before I plan to publish the video so why not re-edit the video to make it even better so I used my new laptop and took the final cut of that video and just made a whole bunch of edits over that and to be honest I did spend quite a bit of time doing it and boy was I glad that I did because randomly one day that video just popped off out of the blue so the lesson here is just to take some time to really make each video as good as you can make it because you never know it could be the thing that pops off. If you have started a new channel or if you're thinking of starting one then I really hope that these tips help you and if you are an existing youtuber and you've got some extra tips that you want to share with the community then do drop that in the comments below. I'm still learning, we're all still learning and I'm sure everyone would appreciate that a lot. Okay guys take care and see you in the next video.